everybody welcome back to my channel my name is Michelle I'm super glad that you're here today because it is the season of giving and I'm sure that all of you have been very very busy like I have getting gifts for people and it's such a good time of year and I just feel like this year everything kind of feels normal again and I love that so I decided to also gift myself my fantastic sales associate James who is the best and I will put his information down below he is an incredibly knowledgeable and also just fun essay to work with in one of the Chanel boutiques and I mean how can you resist this like I couldn't even open it without you guys because it's just so beautiful it's like got the camellia flower on there it just feels like holiday and the crazy thing about this feeling like holiday is that normally the collection that i'm going to show you comes out when it gets warm outside this on the other hand did not so many of you are familiar with the Le Beige collection that chanel puts out every year Oh, he put all kinds of like little things in here for me too. So, Coco Mademoiselle and some Chanel number no. five and my receipt that we hide from my husband. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> so I decided to go with one of the blushes. I got the lightest shade. It's called Rose Polaire. And I... I'm very excited actually because I haven't picked any of these up ever. I got the new Cool Le Beige eyeshadows, which I'm excited about. Well, there's more little goodies in here. See, that's a nice thing about making a relationship essay. They they spoil you and make it so much fun. Oh, there's all kinds of like wonderful skincare in here, and I'm so excited. Thank you, James. And I did pick up an extra one of these, the one of the cocoa bombs for lips because this was a color that looked like me. This usually comes out in the warmer months when it's getting like really, really nice out. The Le Beige collection is always a little bit less formal. It's a little bit more like easy breezy, kind of almost summery. It's the kind of makeup that you would take on a beach vacation or just put on for like an afternoon. Nothing too fussy. Not the kind of makeup that makes it look like you're trying super hard. I have tried the Le Beige foundation. I actually prefer the Water Fresh Tint to any of the other Le Beige foundations that have come out. I have both medium and medium light. I'm definitely going to go to medium light and right now. I usually mix them up a little bit because I'm wearing it in the warmer months when <laughs> I don't want to have like a full face of makeup on. Let's put my hair back, shall we? Even though, hi, Michelle is my wonder of the world of hair and all things that we'll be talking about very, very soon. I love this foundation. Now I tried the touch and it wasn't for me. It's a more concentrated version. If you're not familiar with this formula, you can see that it's like very watery and runny. It's kind of running down there. But if you look very, very closely, there are little teeny tiny bits of pigment. You don't need a lot of this and what winds up happening is you break up these little pigment dots, <laughs> I don't know what else to call them, and the foundation is water-based so it's very lightweight and it feels like nothing on the skin. So I'm going to use my Sonia G Jumbo Base to go into this and you know, this is not the kind of foundation where you're going to get full coverage. This is even out your skin tone, make your skin look really fresh. 
as if, you know, you didn't try very hard. You're not wearing that much makeup. It feels like this like very cooling kind of water break on the face. I did do my brows off camera because I had makeup on already today and I did not feel like redoing my brows again. This foundation is really just, it's been a favorite of mine for so long. I don't even know when I first started using it, but it's, it's, it's several years that are in that. I cannot believe that it's going to be 2024. I can remember my husband and I laying in our bed in our first house that we were pregnant and we were saying, wow, our son is going to graduate from high school in 2022. And, we, and that just sounded like a million years. Well, here we are. He's not even a freshman anymore. He's a sophomore and he is home. So I'm so happy for the holidays. We are not away on vacation right now, even though we were supposed to be because I'm still in my boot from my foot surgery. The happiest one of all will be our dog that we're going to be here the whole time. So this just goes on super easy. And then what I like to do is just where I'm feeling dark, I am going to go in. I'll use the Chanel one today. This is the Sublimage Corrector Le You, and it is such a beautiful concealer that sometimes I wear it as a foundation. It's interesting because the Sublimage regular foundation does not have the same kind of properties that this one does. This is unscented, no silicones. So it's going to put a little bit of this onto my palette and close this up. I mean, yes, I wish this came in a pump, yes, or a tube, but it's so good that it's hard to complain about it. I put way too much on here but as you can see it's a nice light color so it's kind of like a rosiness to it and what I'm going to do is just go in with my Angie Hot and Flashy I should know this by now A506 that I can't take out of my hands to do a very gentle light amount of concealer just where I need it so I'm starting with my under eyes and I didn't do any correcting or anything so I don't have the Chanel corrector and I just kind of want to keep this as Chanel as I possibly can. So I was looking on line and kind of wandering around and there was an article it was talking about Coco Chanel and how she really changed makeup and what was expected from somebody who was wearing makeup and she really brought like a very casual easygoing vibe to makeup and that translated into I think this collection. I'm going to put this on my eyelids too just as like a a little priming. The other thing that I saw was that in 1924, they put out their first makeup ever. So this is their 100th anniversary of makeup. I'm just going to go on a few areas like where my sun damage kind of bothers me a little bit. This makeup is the kind of thing that I really like because you can see skin through it. I am all about real skin and showing the world real skin and not using filters and things like that. I think it's really important, especially for like our younger people, even though they're probably not watching this, it's like more like our influence on them. I really want them to see that you're looking to do the best version of you, not the AI version, not the edited version. You know, I kind of stick to kind of that smaller scale stuff. Okay, I definitely need some Botox right now. But yeah, this is just a really light amount. It feels great. My skin is super hydrated. For my primer, I used a combination of the Verdant Force Field from Phytosurgeons, a super, super favorite. And then I added a little bit of their RFO. This is the Regenerative Face Oil, and it is just this super combination together. This oil sinks right into the skin. You can see it's got blue tansy in it. And 
it just goes in so nicely. And when you combine it with the verdant forest field, you just get like this little extra bit of hydration, but it all sinks in. Like I can feel this hydrating my hand right now. I think I did like three or four drops of the RFO and then I put on some of this as my primer. Um, okay, so let's take a look at what this looks like. We can start out with the blush. Get a little color on our cheeks here. There are three colors that I will show you. This is the rose. There's also a coral and a mauve. And I really went back and forth and I'm opening this up for the first time with you, but it's got that beautiful Chanel, like Le Beige compact. Looks a little bit different than the others. Ooh, it's got a nice brush. I don't know what is going on with these brushes lately that come with things, but they actually work and they're really nice to have. Oh, this is so soft. And it's like cut on the bias over here. Really neat. Love that. Okay. Ooh, ooh. okay. That I really like. I was scared this was going to be like too pink for me, but it's just got like that little bit of rosiness. I just, you know, at this time of the year when you have absolutely no color, this is such a funny collection to have now. And there's a snowflake on here and it's like, what? Because this is normally spring summer and I, I went back and forth and i might still pick up the mauve because i want to see what this looks like on but i think this is a beautiful color a little swatch first doesn't feel like there are other blushes it feels like there's like i don't know it goes on the skin beautifully but it kind of feels almost and I, I, I don't mean this in a bad way it just feels like there's little texture in here. I can feel that it's just kind of a different formula than anything I've tried before. Right, I'm gonna use the Angie Hot and Fleshy A507 to give myself a little color here. What I'm gonna do is just kind of go on palette and tap off on my hand and see if we can get some cold girl, but this is just such a summery um, release usually. So I'm going kind of up high here because I really think that it helps lift everything in my face a little bit further. So it's pigmented. I actually would like a little bit more color than this. Pretty. Oh, I should have tried the little brush. Let's try the little brush. So cool how there's this little snowflake imprint on here. Yeah, I mean, these definitely work. These are all the things that like I used to like throw away and now they're kind of having a moment. So normally I don't like to go past like here. But since we're like kind of going for that like outdoorsy, opera ski look kind of thing, snow bunny, we might need to add more of this. But for now, I'm feeling pretty good. Let's take a look at the eyeshadow palette next. This is the Le Beige Cool. And most of them are very warm toned that have come out. I think all of them. I don't have any of them here because truthfully i don't like the layout of these shadows at all i have to change my mind i think the shadows are difficult to get to in this configuration and show you what the palette looks like it's got really nice colors in it and i think this is very very pretty and i think these colors are going to be gorgeous the little sparkles that are in here like in the this palette over here they're like little like almost like an electric kind of violet color and then in the burgundy one it seems like there's like almost like a bronzy burgundy and looks like a just kind of like a little fleck that's in this pan over here the one on the top looks like it 
should for all of the LeBeige and it's to make, you know, like a foundation for your eyeshadows. So let's swatch these. I'm going to go into the lavender one almost looks like a little topper. This is the base one. So uh, kind of a, a nude for me color. And then we kind of have like this burgundy color and sort of like a mid-tone pink and then almost like a sandy peach. Actually quite pigmented. I'm kind of surprised of how that just came out. It's definitely got some flecks in it. I'm hoping those show up on the eye. We'll see how it translates. Right now I'm feeling good about this because I am a cool tone lover and most of the time, like I said, these are very warm toned. I can dupe them in other palettes and this layout to me has always been difficult just because it's kind of hard to get a brush in some of them if you're, you know, depending on what you're using. So I'm going to start by laying down some of the top primer shade and I'm going to be using smaller brushes to get into here. And we'll see how this works. I do like being able to put down a base, help cover up some of the, you know, veins and different things that are on my eye. No, normally I would put a, another primer on. Okay, so it's like, it looks like nothing on me because this is like almost exactly my skin color. Let's take a look at the other colors again. So I'm kind of feeling like the lavender one is like your topper. It's going to be the one that sort of transforms this whole thing. I think we'll start just with this mid-tone in the crease and see what kind of pigment we can get from that. These are a teeny bit dusty, so definitely tap off. The pans are so close together that it sometimes feel like they're going to get all over each other. I'm just literally going just right into that crease there. And the LeBeige collection is never supposed to, you know, wow you with pigment like that's not what they're going for they're going for effortless they're going for kind of less is more sort of like Coco Chanel's whole thing about taking one thing off before you leave you know to make it perfect okay I am going in now with a Singe Beauty E03 I'm going to go into the more rosy color now and I am going to just start kind of tapping the mobile lid. Just getting some of the rosy color spread across the lid. Really bl blending just beautifully on the eye. And like I said, it's not going to be like a huge amount of pigment, but it is going to have a certain impact. Go into the deepest color and see how much depth we can get or if this is going to be something that I'm going to want to pair an eyeliner with next time like before I go in. So this is a half fan and I am going to go into here and I'm going to pull this up and out. Now that gave more pigment than I definitely thought was going to happen. Kayla Beige Winter. You're a little tougher than the summer one. That really looks lovely. So we can get a little of that just up here because when I open up my eye, I want to be able to see this color. Okay, definitely not what I was expecting. I was expecting these to not really build too much and this one seems to be building. We'll go a little bit slower on this one and see how much pigment it really takes. Oh, I think this is so pretty. It's like elevated everyday makeup. It's just a little bit more special than the usual. And I just don't feel like it's too fussy. I am going to use a finger now to go into this sort of iridescent kind of lavender looking shade or at least lavender sparkle might look kind of pinky nude. Take a look at it again on the finger. It does look fairly glowy. I 
I'm going to go right in the middle of my mobile lid to create light that when it, the light hits my eyes, it will reflect this purple color. Well, oh, that is really pretty. You guys see that? It's got a nice shift without being overly done. I think this is really pretty. And I always try to make sure that I get some of this color like right at the edge there where my lashes are because when you have a hooded eye, that's pretty much what you're seeing. And I try to go all the way back so that when it's rubbing against itself, when I'm opening and closing my eyes, that I have that color rubbing against the same color. So it kind of hopefully helps to preserve it for longer than not. I'm going to take that rose color again. And I just want to blend this. And I'm going to add some of the softer color with that kind of peachy color because what happens sometimes with these pinks on certain people i think i can wear pink pink very very easily on the eye but a lot of people there's a line that you have to draw because it starts to make you look like you're sick and so by adding more of the peach it just sort of tones down that pink enough for, so that it looks purposeful and not like you're having an allergy attack which is Always a special part of doing your makeup. Wow. I feel like this is a lot more pigment than I was expecting. I'm really pleasantly surprised because I felt like a really subtle summer eye would seem so silly right now. But this is definitely more of a snow lodge kind of opera ski type of thing. I think this is really pretty. Now, the lavender color that you're seeing over here with that reflect, I'm going to actually try to use a different brush, my handy little Rougher 21 brush that I cannot live without. And I want to go in and I want to see if I can build this color up a little bit just to see where I, how far I can get it to go. This is a brush that will literally pick up any sparkly shadows and I'm sure that you could wet these to make them even more but again this is supposed to be sort of not fussy and I don't want to have like a, a strong you know highlight in the middle of this although there would be nothing wrong with that if that's your thing everybody should do them I'm going to put a little of this in the corner and then because we have so much pigment going on I just want to take a blending brush and go back into that initial color and make sure that we have a nice blend right here with up and out so I do think that you could use an eyeliner out here find it a little bit more I don't know how many of you guys have these Chanel bomb sticks but this one is called Lila's. Any iridescent highlighter that you have. I want to just see, because it's got that same reflect. The nice thing about these bombs is that they're very hydrating. They don't pull your foundation up and off of you. I do like to tap it. But I just want to get a little bit of that kind of lavender shift that I'm getting from the eye. You could go like a different direction. You could have done like something more peachy, something more rosy. I do wish that my blush color was a little bit more oomphy. I, I need a little bit more oomph. So let's see if we can build that up also. I'm going to, I want to just take like a very soft brush from like Wayne Goss that my dog attacked and see if we can start looking a little bit more ski bunny with this color on me i feel like this is just continuing to pull like very very pink and the color that i think would be better is the autumn color from the earlier autumn equinox so I'm going to take a little bit of that and just deepen this up a little bit. 
Yeah, I think mauve would have been a really good choice for me. I don't know, I just, sometimes these pinks, they just don't give me enough. And I can always pull off like a mauve color. But since I already had this one, I was just kind of thinking, get something a little bit different. But I have this, and it's not like there are any, the rules police are not going to come and tell me that I can't use this with my LeBeige. The other thing that I took out to just see is these Chanel number no. one. These are the cream blushes. And I was looking at all of them, and this is just a dead ringer. Boy, oh boy, I'm going to have to put the name of this one up here. They're rubbed off from love. But you can take a little bit of that. Just give an even amount to both sides. I literally like fingers because they melt things. And I am such a cream blush person. And I think this with that highlighter and the autumnal equinox are exactly what I was looking for. I exactly wanted this to happen. I am more than happy. And I like that this isn't like a super sculpted look. I did not pull out my Tanda Chanel because I feel like I'm just too light for it right now. So I am going to use a different bronzer just to kind of warm up my skin a little bit. I'm going to use a very light one. This is also from Phytosurgeons. This is shade number four, Rosy Warmth in their Spectral Cream Bronzer. This is one of the best bronzers that I have ever used in my life. And they were able to create enough colors for everybody to be included. There are 12 in all. Six have golden shades and six are rosy. I have the rosy. And I'm not using the brush right now because I want to just make this very soft and just warm up my skin a little bit. You could get a tan when you're skiing. I've done that before. Spring skiing, it's so nice. You can go without a jacket. It's great. Okay. Feeling, I'm feeling the LeBeige now. That's cute. I think that's cute. This is a nice bronzer for him. For a lip, the color that I chose, this is one of the ones that um, was offered, but I did not pick it up because I already have it. It's called Dreamy White, and it's literally just a clear balm. Like, feels good, looks like nothing, and it's matte. So let's check out this Rouge Coco Balm. This is Keep Cool. And here are the other colors that this came in. It's got the pretty white packaging with the gold. Got your CCs. So a little bit different than the LeBeige look, but the Rouge Coco Balms are usually a little more sheer. I'm not going to start with the lip liner because I want to see what this looks like. Okay, right out of the box, that. Oh, this is so my kind of color. It is like that very there, but not there. Shh, just nude. Oh, I love these kind of colors. They are just, they make me excited. I love them. This is like the nudes before they started making nudes. I would wear things like this. These feel so good. They're like incredibly hydrating. Oh, I like this. It's just giving like just some shine. Kind of in that frosty way for, 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 for the winter. I love it. I am going to love it better with liner, though. I'm going to just take my favorite sink or swim from Sephora. Can't go wrong. Nothing too crazy. I don't want the lip liner to be the star of the show. You could also, 
If you like things a little bit darker, you could line your lips first and then put that over to have a second layer. I love that it's frosty but not shiny. That's kind of an interesting combination. It's very pretty though and it feels good, you know. I'm just going to curl my lashes with the rougher, the ones that are going to be going out because I definitely want like a fandula. Normally I like to curl my lashes before I put the makeup on because I like to see how they're standing up to whatever it is that I'm using. I think the liner would be really pretty with this. This is the Rouge Noir and the Stylo Ombre at Couture. And it's a eyeshadow slash liner. I like to use it as a liner. I'm actually gonna go up into the lashes and really push over here. Not too much over here. And I'm actually not gonna go crazy. I don't want it to take away anything from the subtlety of the shadow. Um, I'm going to use the Future Lash from Victoria Beckham. I don't have a, anything from Chanel in a mascara. This is a buildable tubing mascara. And the reason why I'm not going to do the Vast Lash is because it's just a lot more lash. And I think I want to see what this is going to look like. A little bit at a time. I'm going to the base of the lashes and I'm like massaging and I want to build slowly here. I'm not going to do a ton of lower lashes but now you will notice that I do have arthritis and I will have dinked myself a couple times before this is over. It's very easy to clean up when it dries just don't monkey with it when it's wet. This um sometimes needs to be wiped off and you'll you'll go like this and you'll come at there'll be like a lump or something you just kind of get rid of it and the mascara is great it's funny i didn't see this as something that was going to be as violet i thought it was going to be much more you know like pinky I didn't expect it to cross over as much as it did to be a, a, a true winter kind of look, but I like it. All right, we're going to let all my little dinks dry. Just pull these out while we break it down. So water fresh tint. If you need, if you want to try a water based formula like this, that has more coverage, you're going to want the touch. Basically what it is, is like a more intense version of this. So there's more of those little, those little pigment, little bubbles that you have to pop and then they do more covering on your skin. The Rouge Coco Balm, I love it. This is exactly what I like to wear. Like I want this in my purse. And I want one by the computer and I want one somewhere else because I'm not wearing nothing. But it's not like, hey, I'm wearing lipstick either. It's sort of like that, that perfect like in between. And I actually am really liking it. The line are very, very blended like that. I think that's really pretty. I am going to take off the area over here where I dink. All you have to do is use a dry spoolie. It will come right off and if you ever have like glitter stuck to you this works by the way okay so we're gonna clean this up and then what I like to do when I have my mascara on like this and I see the eye look I really want a little bit more depth of color at the edge of my lashes on both sides. What I am going to do is I'm going to go in with my finger. See, this is another reason why these pans are tough. And I don't want to take a lot of this, but I want to add a little bit of the dark right behind those lashes. It'll kind of come up and out and blend into everything else. Just because it really opens up the eye and you can see the difference right here just putting it right at the edge there where your lashes are going to fan out and then kind of tap it in. That's the nice thing about 
Number one, using fingers. Number two, just doing that extra step, that just little extra step of going back and really critically looking at yourself. I am looking at myself and I want even more color than I had. Go in with this darker color, but not a lot of it. I'm going to go a little bit lower. I don't really like stuff all the way down here anymore, but if we can kind of like fake, I don't want to do contour. Just want to have some definition here, but I want it a little bit higher than gravity has taken things lately. So this is just a very beautiful, easy, cool toned, I feel like I could go out for dinner. I could go for a walk with a friend. I mean, I could meet somebody for coffee and then, you know, put on a different lip and go out for dinner or not, or just do this. Cause I would just do this. Um, I think the colors that they chose are really beautiful. I love the eye. I like the lip that I picked out. The only thing that I would have changed is the blush, but by using these wonderful pots, I love these. These creams are so great. They stay on, they're beautiful. They come in so many different tones. Like this would be really pretty with the salsa if you wanted to make it go like a little bit warmer. I feel like I'm really glad I got it. Don't worry if you don't have the exact highlighter. All of these Chanel highlighters are pretty much the same, except for the one that's recently called Rouge Price. That's very red. My favorite for just putting it on with anything is this one called Sculpture. And all this one is, is just sort of a, it's kind of like, I put, call it like putting on a little youth. A little, just a little youth bomb. And this one really doesn't have like a color as much as it has the ability to kind of make things hydrated without being sticky. Like, I don't feel like my hair sticks to it or anything like that. But honestly, I think it's so worth it. The sculpture one is something that everybody should own. You can put it on with anything you wanted to. The Chanel bronzer, the Soleil Tan de Chanel, I'm sure would be beautiful with this. I used the Phytosurgeons today just in its place. Anyway, I have really enjoyed this. I think it's going to be a great thing to add to my winter stay out of the doldrums kind of look. Um, yeah. What do you guys think? Do you like the LeBeige collections? Have you worn a lot of them? Do you have a lot of pieces from them? Do you have a lot of the other eyeshadows. I was actually looking at the one called Light and I think it might be a good one for me. I just have always avoided this and you know right or wrong this is where I landed on it before you know I started doing the video. I just never liked the setup and I also felt like the colors were so warm and dupable. Just easily dupable. But the thing about this shadow is that it does have some impact, but there's still just this beautiful softness to it that I think is, it's very Coco, isn't it? We love Coco. Sound off though down below. What do you think about having Le Beige in the winter? What did you guys think about this blush? Did you think that I shouldn't have added anything to it and this color was like perfect? I definitely think that the coral color, at least from, from photos looking at this, I don't get it. It would be a great blush to wear probably with some of the other Le Beige eyeshadows, which is a nice thing to pick up for that reason. Um, and it all just depends on what kind of a cheek you like to have. I don't really love contouring as much anymore. And my highlights are just to add like 
what I would call like youth do or angel skin. I, I think that more blush is always a good thing. I love more blush, but having the one that I have from the fall definitely worked. It's not like I was dying to have it. And just to kind of like talk about this just one more time, this does have this almost like you're breaking up like little bits. The color comes off beautifully, very evenly. This is actually very, very, very pretty. Sort of reflex almost the same way that the eyeshadow does. But I would love to hear what you guys think. Is this a crazy thing to have Le Beige right now? Or no? The other thing I wanted to say is I did not purchase any of the primers. There are three primers in this. There's a white, there's like a champagne color, and then more of like a bronzy tone. I have been using the Victoria Beckham primers for a very long time. I did not use that today. This is what this primer looks like. This is the original. And when you start to blend it out, you get this really beautiful, I can't say, it's not sparkly. I'm not saying it's sparkly and it's not even that it's shimmery. Like that's not even the part of it that, let me try to turn this light up to see if you can see this. It catches the light and when you have this on, and then let's say we put a little bit of medium light on top of it. Here's the medium light. And I'm going to rub this onto my hand with that foundation, just a little beige. And the original, you almost do get like that, that kind of wintry glow. I have heard that they are very hydrating. Let me show you what the golden looks like from Victoria Beckham also because there's a bronzy color. So this one has more pigment and I tend to bring this one like on vacations or wear it in the summertime just to give my skin a little bit of a lift and you'll see like when it goes on. But if I use some of my medium, which I would probably be using in the warmer months, put a little bit on here, and broke up the pigment and rubbed it together. It does go and make you a very tan, not very tan, <laughs> it gives you a little color. And whether or not you want a little or a lot, I don't know that you have to buy the primers. I am the kind of person that hates when they put out something so good that's like limited edition that sometimes I'm just like, I can't even try this because if you're going to take it away from me, I don't know what I'm going to do. And then I get into this whole thing where I got to buy backups. I got to buy backups. There's always something new that comes along. There's always something different. And the thing about these that Victoria Beckham created with Augustina Spotter is that they work for my mature skin. This works for me. I wasn't sure what kind of glow I was going to be getting and I didn't buy them in person. Now, maybe if they come to, you know, Nordstrom or something and I can actually touch them and manipulate them and play with them, who knows, you know, maybe I'll load up on one of them. For now, I can get the look with other primers, so that should not be a huge concern. I am not going to be buying everything from every single release. It's crazy. We have all this makeup and of course we love the new stuff and it's not like I'm not going to have new things, but that wasn't necessary. Like I didn't have to buy a primer and truthfully, do I need to buy the other blush? No, I really don't. I don't know if it's my favorite formula of blush. I don't know about that breaking down the feel of it is, I don't want to say gritty, but but there is little teeny tiny, not even like a grain of salt, but you can feel it and you can feel the, the texture of the blush. It's not silky and smooth. Like if I put my fingers on, okay, this is a Patrick Tashi's blushing, which actually might be really pretty with this and go there next. When I feel this formula, 
there's a smoothness to it. There's a there's a silkiness that's there. And you kind of get this satin mat kind of a look. I hate when they use those words, but I'm gonna use them too if they're going to. A satin mat. This would actually be really beautiful. And this kind of makes me feel like this is how it could go more coral, you know? As long as we're here, and I have this one here too. This is an old favorite of mine. It's called She's Different or Oh, She's Different. Yeah, Oh, She's Different. And you could see, by the way, these are the Patrick Ta blushes. They have a cream and a powder with each of them and there is a little flap on these that protects the cream and then the powder doesn't get in it and that doesn't get in the powder so it's really a nice a nice component but you can see where you could take this warmer or take this more to the burgundy like this is a pretty versatile look that you can manipulate with lips, cheeks, that kind of thing. So this is the look that we are going to be putting together today. It's a really good present to pick up for yourself. <laughs> so all you have to do is text the number that I give to you and you will get a wonderful essay that can help you with looking at the collection, showing you swatches and sending you that beautiful Chanel box with the bow on it and you can have all the fun of opening up your own present. I just wanted to show you guys this because I started thinking about the palette. You can get this look if you have the Sunrise palette. It's got that like purple iridescent -y color over here and if you go into like these colors and you leave out the yellows that is pretty dupable. I think you can get a lot of the same look from the Byredo. Like a lot. You're just going to need that like iridescent purpley color, which is close down here. Okay, so here's another way that you could go to get this idea with Violet Sateen from Tom Ford. I mean... I think you have these colors. Maybe not in one place, but the idea so similar. So any of these like warm tone kind of like ideas with the pinky reds and the peaches, as long as you have that one that's got a little bit more of the lavender in it, it's just, you have this a million times. You don't have to feel any FOMO. Everybody's having a hard time right now. You got to buy a million presents. I think this is one that you can just sort of like close your eyes and let it pass. The more I think about the blush, I think it's weird. I think it's got like a weird... It doesn't necessarily go on the skin weird, but it doesn't feel silky smooth. There's like, there's no satin feel. There's no smoothness. Yes, you can spread it on on your skin, but it's got this almost, I keep saying it, it's got like little grains that you rub in that area and then they're gone. But it's not the smoothest blush <laughs> that I've ever felt. I don't even know if I would recommend picking up the blush at all. The palette I do think is beautiful, but I do think if you have any palettes with pinks and burgundies and peaches and you have one slightly iridescent purple shadow, you have the whole palette. So although it is beautiful and I will wear it and I think it's very pretty and it's nice to have, I think that this is a place where you could take a breath and save some money and wait to see what they're gonna come out with for spring.
that's what I, I don't want to lie to anybody I'm not gonna like sugarcoat stuff like I, with everything that I just tried with it I'm positive that it's dupable because I don't really like this layout anyway this is hard to get a brush into um it's not completely cool it's definitely got some warmth but it's not it goes more berry than it does melon. And I think the only thing throwing this off is this one shadow. Like if you look at this without this one shadow, you have it, you own it, you really do. Take a look, some warm tones, some berry tones, and something with a little iridescent purple. That is all you need to make this look. And then you can put whatever kind of lip you want to with it. Just to give it like a little slightly cooler, nudie look and then this is mob beauty by the way it's the matte lip in m102 that i can't say enough good things about like i think boy is so pretty too it's like one of my favorite lips this formula keep cool i'm gonna put keep cool on top of, of this other cool tone one more in the middle like a highlight then i can kind of see where it can pull to a cooler look and i could even add more of this like very cool tone blush that i have i wish i had a backup of this this blush is magical i love it everybody's like summer's rough i say Fake this, don't buy it. If you are going to spend your money on anything, my suggestion would be the Le Beige. Foundation is life-changing. It feels like nothing. It evens out your skin tone. It lasts for a while because you only need like half of a pump for your whole face. And I know like with the touch, you need even less than that. I like the way this spreads better. It doesn't build. You're not going to get a built-up coverage but that's not what I want from this and I have plenty of concealers that you know are all different textures I've got ones that are sticks and ones that are liquid and you can make the whole rest of your face work this is worth the money this is worth the spend this is something that you will love save your money for the next collection you've got this you you have these colors all you have to do is put a little bit of your iridescent like lavender or something on there do whatever blush you want whatever lip you want but you have these you have these colors and unless you're somebody who you know has to have chanel then who cares like it's not like when you walk around during the day you're not like look i'm wearing chanel no one knows what you're wearing good friends of yours it's like fun to talk about because like more like makeup people but Normal people on the street would just look at you and say you look pretty. Don't waste your money on this. It's, it's pretty. And if you get it, you'll like it. But I think the blush is weird. I just want to go on record with the blush is weird. I don't know what that formula is. Like I think the one from the fall is by far better. I touch this. I feel this. It's silky. There's no, there's no texture. There's no grit. There's nothing but silkiness. I think I got, I think I'm good. I don't know if you need the blush at all because I think that you can do that. Now, this lip, I could own a hundred of these and I would be absolutely fine with it. It's a matte formula, which is really nice. I love the frostiness. I hear this is making a big comeback. Frosty lips. This is the kind of frosty I could get into though where it's very cool tone it makes your lips look hydrated but more in like a lip balmy way than like a even like a lip glossy way like you would you don't have to line this all in all i think these are really some nice pieces and of course i want to know what you think what do you think of the cool tone palette is it for you what do you think about the blush? Do you think it's a blush that we need? Do you think it's a blush that you would want to try a different color of? Do you, would you pick up all three to kind of go with all of your Le Beige eyeshadow? 
just run out and get this because these are amazing. They're water-based, they're hydrating, you'll feel fantastic, no question. And I think that is it for today. So thank you so much for joining me today. If you had a good time here, I would hope and love you to subscribe to my channel. I'm a newer creator and I will put down my essays information below in the description box. You're welcome to comment or ask questions at any time or slide into my DMs if there's something that you want to know, you know, just you knowing and not somebody else. That's totally fine also. And also check me out on Instagram. I put on some fun content there. My stories are always pretty interesting. I'm kind of going through like a huge Stevie Nicks phase again. So <laughs> there's a lot of those. I would love to have you subscribe to my channel. So please hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you know when I upload my videos. And I'm going to be making these several times a week all winter long. And I would love to have you along for the ride. Thanks everybody. Mm -hmm. I wish you all happy holidays and a happy and healthy new year. Happy holidays, everybody. Merry Christmas. Happy new year. Happy Hanukkah. Happy everything. <laughs>